Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will set up new company information into QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Now that we have the new file set up, we're going to enter some of the company data into the file. Remember, there's three main areas that we enter data in. We have this area over here, the uh, icon that will show the sidebar. We have the plus arrow up here that will turn into an X as we see the information for normal day-to-day -day input information. And then we're going to have the cog here, and that's going to give us what we want at this time, which will give us the company information. So we'll select the cog and then we're going to go over to the uh, your company and we want to set up our account and setting information. So we will go into account and setting. We'll see the menus on the left hand side where we have company, billing, sales, expenses, payment and advanced. We're going to start off in the company section. So we are in the company that will be the default as we go in here. We have the company name, company type and contact information. We could up here put a logo in. We know it's not required, of course, but I'm gonna to try to put a logo in. And so we're just gonna click on that logo. We're gonna say plus, select this plus arrow. I'm gonna to go to my desktop where the logo is located, most likely or hopefully. Scroll down to the logo and just have this guitar be the logo. And you probably wanna to put more time into the logo than that, but that's just to see that uh, we can put a logo in. Uh, we have uh, the legal name I'm going to keep as Get Great Guitars. That's the default when we set up the company. We're going to say same as the company name. And then we're going to put in the EIN or Social Security, depending on if we're a sole proprietor, which it would be a Social Security unless we got an EIN number or the EIN. It's useful to get an EIN even if you're a sole proprietor, even if you don't have a uh, employee's. Uh, that's an employee identification employee identification number the EIN you don't need even if you don't have employees however it's useful when you fill out documentation such as this or 1099s to not have to put your social security number on it so uh, it's worth looking into you'd have to go to the I to go to the irs.gov um, in order to put that information in so I'm just gonna select the number here and save that this is typically the format of an EIN of course the social security would look like a typical social security with the two dashes so there we have that information now uh, i've saved it and i'm going to go back here and just check it one more time so we have that information has been saved we're going to scroll down and then go to the company type and see what we have here we've got the email address we've got the um, customer facing email it's going to be the same company phone number we can put here the web page, of course, we can put here if we have an applicable web page. We're going to want to put uh, down here in the address. We do want to make sure to have the address. We don't; These aren't required fields, but if we don't have the address there, then it's not going to show up on our invoices, and that could affect our billing and our payment and our receiving of payments. So we do want to put the address here, and that will populate on many of our forms. So we have the information populated here. Of course, this is a fictional information or just a, an address, not at the address where you will not find a guitar shop at this address, most likely. So we've got uh, the 244 West 23rd, New York, uh, 10011. And we're going to go ahead and save that information. We're going to scroll down and see what else we have. We have the communications with Intuit uh, marketing preferences. We're going to leave that as is and then go to under the company in the left uh, bar over here billing and subscription so a lot of these we're going to leave to the default so this is going to be the billing information if we wanted to go into that information and set up a different type of billing setup with uh, Intuit and QuickBooks this is where we'll, we will have the upgrades and the downgrades so we had the three versions of QuickBooks so if we wanted to switch from one version to the other version uh, upgrade or downgrade this is an area we can we can do that then we have the payroll information down here. Uh, no subscription at, at this time. We may look into the payroll information a little bit more as we go. We'll, we'll talk a bit about payroll and the payroll options when we get to paying payroll. 
And then we have the payments down here. We're going to keep that uh, not subscribed. We're going to say uh, checks, checks and supplies. If we were to order checks, then we can go through the ordering of checks here. Checks are going to be something that we will, if we're printing them through QuickBooks, we'll still order outside checks that we can go through and uh, print them with the QuickBooks software. We're then going to go to the tab over here. We're going to go to the sales tab. So selecting the sales tab. We could customize the forms up top. We're not going to go into this now. We're going to keep most of the defaults within the sales tab. So we've got the preferred invoice terms. The default is going to be uh, net 30, meaning they're going to be wanting to pay within the 30 days. Preferred delivery, we're going to keep that at none. The shipping, the customer field, uh, the customer uh, transaction numbers, service date, discount, and deposit. We're going to keep those as off at this time. Product and service, uh, show product service column on the sales forms. We're going to keep that on. We're going to keep the defaults here, except we do want to track uh, inventory quantity on hand. So that's going to allow us to track the inventory. We're going to be selling guitars. We're going to show both the inventory of selling the guitars as well as having some service items that we will be inputting. So we're going to see if we can turn this on. We'll check both of these here. So I'm going to say track inventory quantity on hand and track quantity and price. And then we'll save that information. So we'll save that and say turn on tracking, track inventory quantity on hand. Also turn on show item tables on expense. We're going to say OK. Then we've got uh, the messages here. So we're going to keep uh, the default on the messages. This is typically going to be messages that if we're given in terms of payment type mess messages, uh, here's your invoice message. If we're going to email the invoice and uh, the receive payment message. Reminders. So we'll select the reminders here. This is going to be an, a reminder, typical, just normal email. This is a default message, by the way that QuickBooks has to remind, in this case, that uh, we need payment. We haven't received payment yet. Uh, we have the online delivery. We're going to keep that uh, as, the, as the default at this time. And uh, the statements uh, list each transaction as a single line show aging table. We will keep the default settings there as well. We're then going to go over to the expenses tab, moving down to the expenses tab. We've got uh, the billing and expenses. We're going to keep generally the defaults here. Show item table and expenses and purchase forms. Track expenses and items by customer. We're going to keep that off. Make expenses, items billable, and default uh, bill payment. Purchase orders, use purchase orders. We're going to turn this one on. So this one's important. The default was off. We're going to go ahead and say we want to use purchase orders. And uh, we're going to say use purchase orders. Check that off. We're not going to enter anything into the custom fields at this time. And we're not going to have the custom numbers. We're going to let uh, QuickBooks select the numbers as they go, meaning it'll be in order by the time, by the order of purchase orders. So we're going to say save on that. And then we've got uh, messages. We'll keep the messages as the default. Uh, please find our purchase order. We're going to keep that as the default. We could customize that, of course, if we so choose. We're going to go to the payment options and we're in the company tab on the left hand side. We're going to payments. So payments, uh, get paid fast. We're going to keep the default settings here. Uh, existing account, we're going to keep these default settings in the payment options. We're going to go to the advanced tab. So company and advanced tab. So accounting, this is where you can set up your fiscal year if it's different. Now note that usually I think of a fiscal year as what year, what month it ends, meaning December 31st is the year end. They're putting the beginning date, so just keep that in mind. Don't, don't think that this is a January year end. It's the January start, which means it's a December year end. So if you have a typical 1231 year end, you can keep the default. It'll typically be the default setting. It's going to be the same as the fiscal year, so if you don't have any unusual year, that'll be the same. If you do, then you want to adjust this accounting method. Accrual is the default. You typically want the accrual because uh, that is the default, but uh, we can toggle back and forth to a cash method as well, and uh, we can talk more about what the difference is as we start entering data. Uh, close the books. We're going to keep that off at this time. Well, company type, uh, tax forms. This will be more or less relevant depending on how uh, you, you're setting up your tax forms and how to print this information. If you're using the, the information to print uh, the tax form or, 
or uh, compile that data separately. In essence, if you are a uh, sole proprietor, you would have a 1040. If you are some other type of entity, partnership, S corporation, corporation, you could select the other forms here. Uh, chart of accounts. We have account numbers off. Uh, unless you really understand the account numbers and how to order the account numbers, you may not want them because it's very easy to set up the wrong account numbers. If you're experienced with account numbers, they can be very useful, but you have to know how to set them up correctly or else you're going to have some funny looking account numbers. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we see the chart of accounts. But uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar with that, then I would leave that off. What it's going to do is then be in order by first account type, as it always would be, even if we used account numbers, and then by alphabetical order. Categories, we're going to say uh, keep the defaults here, track class and uh, track location automation this stuff is actually very useful so we, we're going to keep the defaults primarily so pre-fill with previously entered content that'll help you a lot when we enter a second month's worth of data because it'll start to apply that information from the prior month automatically apply credits that also really helps to us to see if there is a credit and whether or not we want to apply automatically invoice unbilled activity we're going to keep the default at this time copy estimates which is off <laughs> copy estimates to invoice, we're going to keep that default off. Add an automatically apply bill payments. We're going to keep the default and have that on. Projects, uh, organize all job related activity in one place. We're going to keep the default there. Time tracking, we're not going to do too much of the time tracking here. QuickBooks has a good time tracking tool, but oftentimes people uh, will use time tracking outside and then uh, use QuickBooks in order to bill the time and or enter it into payroll. Currency, uh, we're going to have the home currency, it will be the dollar. Uh, Multi-currency, we're just going to have one here, it's going to be a simplified item. Other preferences, date format, this is the current date format. If you would like some other format, we could choose some other formats. Number format will be here. Again, uh, if, if you want to put it in some other format, you can choose to do that. Custom label, customers will keep the default. Warn if a uh, duplicate check number is used. Very useful because that's going to be one of our checks against you know, having error or fraud or theft is to have check numbers not be <laughs> not show up duplicated. Warn if duplicate bill number is used. We're going to keep the default as off. Sign me out if uh, inactive for an hour. So we're going to keep that default meaning uh, it's going to sign us out. So if we just leave the computer on, it's going to sign us out. That will be it. We're going to say done on those settings. Hello, in this presentation, we will set up a new company worksheet within Excel. A new company worksheet will be used in order to enter a comprehensive problem for a new business, working the transactions of the bookkeeping of a new business within the Excel worksheet. This being closer to doing the process by hand, doing the process with paper and pencil, a process that is much more transparent and will allow us to see all the components and the working parts of putting together the books for a company as we do this we will compare and contrast that to accounting software such as quickbooks and in so doing we'll be able to see how quickbooks processes some of the activity and therefore be better equipped to use accounting software such as quickbooks first thing we're going to do is set up the new worksheet and we'll compare and contrast that to setting up a worksheet within QuickBooks, meaning setting up a new file within QuickBooks. What's the first process and how can we do an equivalent process when we set up something in an Excel worksheet, more of a, of a setting up by hand or by paper and pencil type of process. When we set something up in QuickBooks, we typically have a shortcut within QuickBooks that really helps us with the setup process. And that is we essentially tell QuickBooks this is the type of business we are. We're a merchandising business in this case, and we have service services as well, meaning we sell stuff. In our case, we're going to sell guitars, and we also have services. Therefore, telling QuickBooks that, QuickBooks can automatically generate what we will call a chart of accounts here and just give us chart of accounts that we can start working with. We can start building our transactions with this automatically generated chart of accounts. That, in essence, is what we will first have to generate within our Excel format to work the problem forward. So let's see what QuickBooks did when we just tell QuickBooks, hey, we're a merchandising company, give us a chart of accounts. 
QuickBooks spits something out such as this for the chart of accounts. We have the type of accounts and we have the name of accounts. I'm first going to go over the accounts types because this is really the driving factor in terms of how QuickBooks will record certain transactions and the ordering of the chart of accounts. It's going to be an order in essence by the accounting equation first, which is assets equal liabilities plus equity. And then equity is broken out between equity and then income and expenses. So in essence, first we have assets, liabilities, equity, then income or revenue and expenses. That's going to be the order of these accounts. Then within that, QuickBooks breaks it down even further. It'll break it down first to cash and then to accounts receivable, two accounts we don't yet have here in the QuickBooks example, haven't set them up yet. And then it's going to go to other assets, fixed assets, other assets, other current, uh, that's going to be it, other, <laughs> that'll be it for the assets. And then we're going to go to liabilities, which is going to break out to other current liabilities. And then we would have uh, long-term liabilities or other liabilities, if there were any, there are none at this point. And then we have the equity type of accounts. Then we have the income or revenue type of accounts. Then we have the expense type of accounts, starting with the most important expense type, that of cost of goods sold, followed by all the rest of the expenses. If we look at the accounts over here, we note that they are not in order by alphabetical order. We have an account that starts with A, but then it goes to furniture and then something with an S over here and whatnot. So it's not in alphabetical order. It would not be in order of account number, not primarily, although if we were to set up account numbers and do it well, we would set up the account numbers to follow the same ordering of the account types so that it would, in essence, look like it was in order by account number. But we're first being driven by the type of account here. Within the type of account, if we don't have account numbers, it will then order within that type in alphabetical order or in the order of account numbers if we choose them. Meaning, for example, if we have all these expenses here, within the expense section, we have it in order of, at, of the um, alphabetical order from that point forward. So that's going to be how it will be set up here. If we look at the accounts, we have accumulated depreciation. We have uh, furniture and fixture. These are going to be fixed assets. We've got uh, the security deposits, which is going to be an other asset, payroll liability. That's, that's going to be a liability, open and balance, draws, and owner's equity, our all equity accounts. Then we've got the merchandise sales, revenue or sales, sales discount. We've got the, the fees, and then we have all the expenses here. This is what we're going to set up now within our Excel format so that we have these accounts that we can use in order to work transactions. As we set up Excel, I'm not going to go through the actual setup of the whole process. I'm just basically going to, going to go over the worksheet that we will be using and then look through that worksheet. If you'd like to get something on in terms of how to set up this whole worksheet, then uh, we can do that at a later time. But for now, we're going to go over its components and then use a worksheet like this in order to see the detail of the transactions that would be done within accounting software. In essence, we're going to start with a chart of accounts. This chart of accounts is just a list of accounts, and again, it will be in order by assets that in our case will be in green, and then liabilities, then equity, then income and expenses. It's not further broken down into um, any subcategories here, although it's going to be in a similar order. Typically, the idea would be that we would want it to be in order of liquidity for the assets and things like current liabilities before long-term liabilities for the liability type of accounts so it's it doesn't and it doesn't necessarily have to be in alphabetical order within the types of accounts for example all the expenses don't necessarily need to be in alphabetical order that's going to be the default for most accounting software and if you wanted to deviate from that you can use accounts numbers and the accounting software will then uh, order by the accounting numbers within each subcategory so our first goal is just to list these accounts and we would just put the accounts here and list them out. Now you might be asking, where would we get this chart of accounts? And like QuickBooks, QuickBooks is in essence compiling the data of the common accounts for a type of industry. So if we choose a merchandising type industry, someone who sells inventory, we can get a pretty good idea of the type of accounts. For example, every company is going to have a checking account. Every company is going to have accounts receivable pretty much, meaning people that owe them money. And then we're going to have inventory assets, 
if we sell stuff we're going to have inventory and then we have prepaid insurance this was something not on the chart of accounts this is actually a more comprehensive chart of accounts here uh, than we are starting with than we just looked at in terms of the quickbooks file uh, but uh, we, we're going to add a few more of these accounts here and then we got the short-term investment undeposited funds uh, accumulated depreciation furniture and fixtures now some of these we may not when we first start out have included we may not have them there and we may not have we could start recording transactions without any accounts any chart of accounts and just add them as we go but that's a little bit more difficult of a process because then we have to add the accounts each time so what we're going to do is we're going to put all the accounts in place or at least most of them and then uh, go through and record these transactions then every account's going to have every company pretty much has an accounts payable we might have a credit card like a visa account we're going to have interest payable which we're going to use later loan payable we're going to take out a loan payroll taxes uh unearned revenue loan payable and then we have the equity section and that's going to be uh, the draws and the equity we will be a sole proprietor and then we have the sales merchandise sales and uh the rent on the music the service this is all revenue and then the expenses cost of goods sold and all the other expenses that will be our list of accounts now here we're also going to include the general ledger and this is something that's not often seen within quickbooks because within quickbooks we typically jump right from a data input like writing a check or entering an invoice to the financial statements and then quickbooks or some accounting software will just generate the financial statements and we don't need to take a look at the other steps we just say hey i just entered a check what did it do to the balance sheet or what did it do to the profit and loss or the income statement but uh, if we get an idea of the process how to set it up then we'll see how this stuff is built that's what we get from working it more in a paper and pencil format more in an excel format and uh, the fact that we can automate it is of course great once the data is input uh, then we can set up as we'll see here we're basically setting up a program to just automate everything that happened and generate the financial statements but if we understand what the actual steps are in that automation process <laughs> then we can go back when there's problems and we can see what quickbooks is actually doing we can interpret what is being what is happening we can better interpret the financials that are made and if there are a problem in the financials that are made we can better uh, troubleshoot that problem and figure out what is going on and what went wrong so the chart of accounts then or the general ledger is going to be just the same account same order we have the checking account accounts receivable inventory prepaid insurance checking account accounts receivable prepaid insurance and uh, inventory and then it goes the assets liabilities equity revenue expenses assets in green liabilities in orange and then we've got the equity and then we've got the revenue and expenses so this is a long intimidating looking worksheet i know but all we did was put it in the same order and we gave some more space here why do we need this other list of accounts if it's the same list of accounts as over here because this will give us the detail it'll give us an ordering by date as we enter transactions we're going to say hey what happened to cash by date by order of transaction and then it'll give us a running balance over here and tell us what that ending balance is and that ending balance ultimately will be what is on the balance sheet what we use to create the balance sheet however to create the balance sheet we typically would make a, a trial balance recorded on the trial balance and then use that trial balance to create the balance sheet so all these accounts over here are just the same accounts as over here they're going to give us the detail of the transactions by date of transaction give us the running balance and the ending balance that ending balance then used to create the trial balance so these amounts here are just being generated from the general ledger within the trial balance and then the trial balance will be used ultimately to create the financial statements so these financial statements it's hard to see when they're all zeros but we will see as we go are being generated from the trial balance and that's the same automation that in essence the accounting software is doing that's what allows us to go from just entering a check and just jumping over here then to the balance sheet and say hey what happened to cash in the balance sheet when i just wrote that check 
it's really going through the detail. If there's a problem, if the balance sheet doesn't look right after we wrote that check, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go back to the general ledger. We're going to look at the detail and say, hey, where is that check? How come it's not appearing as I believe it should be? And it's probably going to be a date issue if that's happened. And then we'll go through and take a look at that. So that's, in essence, what we're going to do here as we build this. It'll give us a better idea of what QuickBooks is, is doing. As we do that, then, we're going to record transactions with the general ledger, with the general journal that will then be posted to the general ledger to create the trial balance and the financial statements. So we'll compare and contrast common type of transactions within QuickBooks. And those types of transactions are things like making an invoice, writing a check, making a bill. And all those transactions within QuickBooks, it's set up or any type of accounting software so that we don't really need to know debits and credits. We don't really need to know what's going on with it, how it's being recorded. All we need to know is how to put in the information to enter an invoice or write a check. And QuickBooks automates all the rest of it. What we, what we will do here is we'll do the journal entry that QuickBooks in essence does when we write a check, when we create an invoice, when we enter a bill, and then we'll go through and post it to the general ledger and post it to the trial balance and see what happens to the financial statements and get an idea of how the whole thing will be built in a process that will be closer to done in a paper and pencil process, this transparent process, and that'll give us an idea of uh, what is going on within a computer system. This will help us out if we're, one, an accounting student and we're going to something that we learned theory and going to uh, Quick QuickBooks or some accounting software and trying to see what the software is doing, or if we're someone who has learned a lot about accounting, a lot about how to enter transactions and work with uh, programs such as QuickBooks, and now we want to have a better understanding about how to, how to work the data better within QuickBooks, how to set things up better, how to see how things work. This will give us an idea of how things are working uh, within the QuickBooks program. Or if we're just someone that wants to run a, that's running a small business and, and we're using the software and we want to get a better idea of what the software is doing so we can troubleshoot types of problems.